Hello friends, here we are in the middle of another pandemic. Another, you say? Why yes, we've had pandemics throughout history. So rest assured, even though it does seem like the end of the world right now, it's been the end of the world many times before and we're still trucking along. But I did have someone on my Instagram request a series on past pandemics and to see their effects on population, society, climate, all that fun stuff. So I wanna take a look back at some of the biggest pandemics throughout history and drop some knowledge. Hopefully this will be a welcome learning opportunity that is topical, but still far enough away in the historical timeline where I'm not getting your anxiety levels any higher than they already are. So with that being said, first up is the plague of Athens. Whoa. This is super fitting for today because the words epidemic and pandemic are both of Greek origin. Epidemic comes from the word epidemios, epi meaning upon and demos meaning people. And pandemic comes from the word pandemos, pan meaning all and demos meaning people again. So all people, makes sense. So let's dive into the plague that ran rampant around the city of Athens, ultimately weakening their political power and signaling the beginning of the end of the golden age of Athens. Let's time travel now all the way back to the year 430 BCE. It's the second year of the Peloponnesian War, which is the war between the Delian League, led by Athens, and the Peloponnesian League, led by Sparta. It still seems that victory is in reach for the Athenians. Pericles is large and in charge, like things are looking up. Athens being the stronger naval state was relying heavily on its navy to win the war, whereas the Peloponnesians were able to garner massive amounts of land troops. As a defensive measure, Pericles adopted a policy of retreat into the city walls of Athens to protect the city on land while the navy went after the land troops along the coast. Unfortunately, this also meant that people from the countryside around Athens were also making their way into the city walls to protect themselves. That means that the population inside of Athens pretty much tripled. So now, not only is the city overcrowded, it's under-resourced. Like, these guys were not practicing social distancing, okay? The streets were so packed in Athens that you couldn't even try to distance yourself if you tried. This means that Athens became a breeding ground for disease. This is where the plague comes in. We're very lucky to have a first-hand account written by someone who was there, who got the plague and actually survived from it. And his name is Thucydides. That means we know the symptoms of the plague from someone who actually suffered from it. He wrote, but so great a plague and mortality of men was never remembered to have happened in any place before. According to Thucydides, the plague first originated in Ethiopia, making its way up to Libya, Egypt, and over into Greece. Symptoms were an extreme ache in the head, redness and inflammation of the eyes, sore throats that would lead to bleeding, and nasty ass breath. This was then followed up by sneezing, a hoarse voice, pain, and coughing. Then you would vomit, have diarrhea, get some majorly painful pustules, become extremely thirsty, and on top of that, have trouble sleeping. This does not sound like a fun time. Thucydides then goes on to say that it spread throughout the entire Mediterranean and it was so severe that no one could recall ever seeing anything like this before. And of course, just like today, the people that were most vulnerable to this disease were the physicians. So again, we need to just give a big round of applause to the doctors doing all their work here for the coronavirus. Like, thank you so much. You risk your lives every day to keep us safe. And the most we can do for you is to stay at home. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not wearing pants. Yes, I am. JK. The plague is estimated to have killed between 75,000 to 100,000 people. That is 25% of the population of Athens at the time. Funeral pyres were everywhere and there were so many dead that normal funeral rites had just gone completely out the window. People would just like walk up with dead people on their shoulders and throw them onto an already burning fire, which was normally a big no-no, but they had too many bodies, they had to get rid of them. All of the burning pyres though were pretty much enough to send the Spartans packing. They caught sight of all the pyres and retreated to make sure that they wouldn't catch the plague. The Spartans were already experts at socially distancing themselves from the Greeks, so this wasn't really new to them. Apart from the total population depletion, the plague of Athens also brought a lot of social change. Again, our top source Thucydides wrote about the lawlessness that ruled throughout the plight of the plague. 
He was saying that people not knowing what would happen next to them became indifferent to every rule of religion or law. They just stopped fearing and respecting the law whatsoever because they thought they were going to be dying soon anyways. They started to foolishly spend all of their money and they quote, stopped living honorably because they believed that they would not live long enough to reap the benefits of a good reputation. People were YOLOing everywhere, but not in a good way. There was also a huge drop in caring for the ill. As caregivers were the ones that were most likely to catch the plague because they're dealing with the sick, we saw a huge decline in healthcare because no one else wanted to catch it. People were left alone to suffer and die in pain. Luckily, those who rebounded from the plague were then immune to it and they became the primary caregivers for the sick. Archaeologically speaking, we found a mass grave and about a thousand tombs dating between 430 and 426 BCE outside of the cemetery of Athens. The plague also caused a little bit of a religious crisis as well. People were dying regardless of how pious they were, so people began to believe that the gods had abandoned them and were in favor of Sparta over Athens. There were actually a couple of oracles that predicted all of this, which make it kind of creepy. The Athenian oracle was a Doric war shall fall and a great plague withal. Now the Spartans, on the other hand, had their own oracle that said Apollo, who is the god of both plague and medicine, would be on their side if they really just gave the fight their all. So it seems that oracles do come true? I don't know, that was a double whammy right there. If you believe in oracles, just let me know in the comment section below. We can talk about oracles, they're pretty cool. So those oracles right there were enough to really have people questioning their religion and their gods. At the same time, all the people that were coming in from the Attic countryside into Athens, they had nowhere to stay. So they were staying in the temples, getting sick, and temples then became these places of disease and death. And it was very disheartening for the religion. The aftermath of this plague was really intense. This was the largest loss of life in Athenian history. And there was a major breakdown in Athenian society. Athens lost a lot of its power and the Athenian empire could no longer expand. There was also a very big power shift internally within Athens because a lot of very rich Athenians died and left a lot of their money to much lower class relatives. So they kind of got elevated in a sense and that was a really weird shift for the society in Athens. And then a lot of refugees that were in from the countryside started to forge documents to prove that they were Athenian citizens, which was a really big deal at the time. And those who were caught with these forged documents were then forced into slavery. This meant that there were a lot of new strict laws and requirements put in place in order to become an Athenian citizen, which also meant that there was a very big decrease in their military and their political power. Also, that means that the Athenian citizens started to treat its foreign residents or medics as we call them, really horribly. And they lost a lot of the already few rights that they had. And then in regards to the Peloponnesian War, Sparta eventually won and the Age of Pericles officially came to an end. So with all of this madness and sickness, what was the plague that got the Athenians? Historians have been trying to pin down exactly what the disease was for quite some time now. And even with the description of the symptoms by Thucydides, it has been a little bit difficult to really define what it was. Virologists, scholars, doctors, they've all been disagreeing over the years. But the two main possible culprits are either smallpox or typhus. Luckily, today we have science on our side. Science always comes to the rescue. Never doubt science. Science will never leave you. We've been able to use some mathematical modeling to track the rate of the spread within Athens and the rest of the Mediterranean. And then in 2001, they found a mass grave outside of the cemetery of Athens. The study of the skeletal material was undertaken by Professor Manolas Papagrigoraki at the University of Athens, and they were able to extract DNA from three of the skeletons. And Papagrigoraki was able to extract ancient microbial typhoid. Ah, so maybe we have an answer? I don't know, it's pretty cool though. We're not 100% sure that the plague of Athens was in fact typhoid fever because it was a very small test group. And they do say that typhus was quite a, a popular disease back in the day. So it would not not have been unusual for some people to have died from typhus during this time. So the research has been challenged, but either way, this is a big deal. It's definitely a step in the right direction. And thanks to Thucydides, we know that the plague also hit Egypt really hard. So maybe one of these days we'll be able to find mummified remains from 
this time period that have actually suffered from the plague and maybe we'll be able to get some soft tissue to do even further investigation to make sure that it was in fact typhoid. So we all have to give a big thumbs up to Thucydides for taking such detailed notes during the plague of Athens. Without him, none of this would have been possible. Actually, a really fun fact is that Thucydides' style of writing about the plagues seemed to have influenced other writers in their own plague writing. And we're gonna see that when we get to the plague of Justinian. But that, of course, is for another episode. So there you have it, friends. That is the Plague of Athens. Thanks for watching the very first installment of my Past Pandemics series. If you liked the video, go ahead and, you know, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the other Past Pandemics that we'll be talking about in the future. A big thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to help support the channel, go ahead and become a patron. The link to that is in my description down below. It's a really fun community over there. Here are all of my socials. And as always, stay dirty, my friends.